man's fingernails, by his shirt cuffs, his boots, his trouser knee. By all of these things, a man's calling is plainly revealed. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Every day when you leave your home, you give away more than you could ever imagine about who you are and what you do. Do you know who I am, what I do? No. No, great, but I think I can tell you what you do for a living. Look at me, it's, uh, it's people, it's PR, it's marketing, it's that sort of thing. Yes. Is that what you do? Yes. You look for people's skills, you put them in positions. It's some sort of headhunting, is that right? Recruitment, yes. that yes, sort of thing? Right. What do you do? Recruitment consultant. It's fashion, it's an assistant in a shop. This is a fashion, specifically denim, yeah? You were selling denim, you were selling jeans, is that right? You were doing that and you haven't done it for a while. You, you recently come out of that job, is that right? Yes, Is Absolutely that right? right, yeah. Fantastic. Oh my God. <laughs> Open your eyes. Take this guy, his walk, the gum chewing, the long coat, his confident streetwise detached. He's protective of his girlfriend, so he's aware of the danger around him. His hair tells me he's not in the forces, so I'd say he's a journalist. Workmates, the woman on the left, she's wearing nighttime gear at lunchtime but has conservative hair and makeup, so it's only a work outfit. The rose means she's gregarious, so these two work in the PR end of high street fashion. Guy here in the black, dead giveaway. Excuse me, sir, can I stop you for a second? I thought, no, I don't know you. Really. You do know me from Channel 4. Yes, yeah, Mind reader. Jesus. Well, I've got no idea who you are, but oh, so, look yeah. at me, look yeah, at me. I think I can tell you what you do for a living. What's that? You, are you happy for me to tell people? Yeah, yeah. All right, look at me. Look at me. First thing is you walk towards me, your posture is strong and solid. This is obviously a physical and control thing that you're involved in. Your handshake was solid. There's a kind of a thing you're kind of checking yeah. me out slightly, almost <laughs> not suspicious, but you're checking me out. So I'm guessing you're in some kind of security job, is that right? <laughs> Regulation haircut, so you're not a bouncer. <laughs> so this is maybe something to do with uh, police or something like that. <laughs> what, what do you do? What do you do, mate? What do you do? Work in a police station. <laughs> you work in a police station? Are you, you're, not, you're not a policeman, though, are you? It's not no, a, they're security. Yeah. Security for yeah. the police? Uh -huh. All right, okay, now look, that's just okay. me reading your signals. What I want you to do, this is more interesting, is to think of what you would love to do if you weren't doing security for police uh -huh. at the moment. Don't say it, just think it, okay. all right? I'm going to get a bit physical here, but just go with me. Right, look at me and just think mm -hmm. there. Be there in your mind. Imagine yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. Imagine now that you're doing this job, whatever it is. Now, what all is right. it? All right, first thing is this is aspirational. You're moving easily. This is aspirational because your energy is up here, not down there. Something that maybe you've seen and you would really love to be doing. Look at me. Just keep the focus on me. Look at me. All right, now you're in a cramped space doing this thing and you're sat down, so you're going to want to do something in a wide open space. Correct. Where you can maybe uh, move around and get out and big thing. It's obviously going to be sport based. You've got this sport top you're wearing now, but you're not having any sports in your job at the moment. It's a sport it. thing, wide open space. You're on your own. You're on your own doing the security job. It's a solitary job, so that's what you like. So it's a sport thing with a wide open space when you're on your own. It's golf. Isn't it? It's golf. You want to do yeah, golf? golf? Is it golf? <laughs> what is it? What is it? What is it? Golf. European tour. European what? European tour. Golf. You want to be a golfer? Yeah, is that golf. what you're thinking of? Yeah, that's it. You got it. Well done. You'd be a fantastic it's golfer, mate. Take care of the day. Do, but... For one very exciting morning, I went to speak to the exotic and flirtatious dancers of Spearmint Rhino who nightly inflame the propensities of London's gentlemen. You got private rooms where if I wanted to hire you for a private dance that I would take you in there, is that right? As long as you don't touch. As long as I don't touch. <laughs> With your eyes you can touch. With my eyes I can touch. <laughs> would it upset you to be touched? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And do you ever have the situation where somebody is swearing they didn't touch you, but you say that they did? Does that happen? Every night. Every night. <laughs> really? If someone tries it on all the time. Can I show you something? Yes. Can I take your hand? Other hand, I think, for this. All right, hold your hand there, put your thumb in, and fingers together. Now, you absolutely must trust me. Okay? Yeah. Will you close your eyes for me? And from now on, what I want you to do is to count, just in your mind, count the number of times that I touch you on the hand, all right? Just in your head, not out loud. And you two, if you watch and count as well. Okay, open your eyes. Be absolutely honest. How many times did I touch you? Three. Three times. <laughs> what happened? How many times did I touch her? None. <laughs> None. <laughs>
Did I touch it? <laughs> yes, three times. I didn't touch it, did I? You didn't. No? You didn't see me touch no, it? I didn't. You definitely felt me touch it? Definitely. Definitely. I promise. <laughs> Perfect. Now put your thumb in. Close your eyes for me. And trust me. You must trust me. Okay. I need you to count in your mind, not out loud, count the number of times that I touch you on the hand. Okay? And the other two just watch carefully what I do. Okay, open your eyes. Look at me. Honestly, how many times did I touch you? Honestly. Say it. Three or four. <laughs> yes? Three or four times I touched here, you. There, there, and here. How many times did you see me touch None. you? None. <laughs> we didn't go anywhere near our hands. Nowhere near. Yeah. He touched me, believe me. <laughs> I felt him. A good communicator affects our physiology. The power of voice can entrance us, even induce or remove pain. I came to the old operating theatre at London Bridge. You're all medical students? Yeah. yeah. Have you been here before? Yeah. It is a remarkable place. This is where they used to perform amputation. Amputation. Imagine yourself. Imagine delirious, yourself. Delirious. Delirious. With fear. With fear. There's no anaesthetic. Just hold you down. Hold you down. Hold you down. And hope that you'd just pass out before they'd finished. So I want to try something with all of you. And while it may be a bit disturbing, I can absolutely guarantee your safety. If you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. You can say so. But if you do, once you're in, you're in. And there's no going back, all right? Are you all happy to do this? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? No. You don't want to do it? No. Sure? Yeah. Absolutely fine. Can to make your way back out there? So let's begin. It's very easy to get an idea in somebody's head. Do you study dentistry as part of the course? No. No? The whole area of toothache is an interesting one. But often what happens is the nerves at the actual base of the tooth, like right, you know, right in there, right where the base of the tooth would be, go bad, right in there. You must have had really bad toothache. The first sort of tingling feeling that you get, I mean, what's it like? How do you describe this sort of a toothache pain? Constant pain. Yeah? yeah. You're feeling that now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's that like? It's sharp down straight across. Mm -hmm. You're genuinely feeling that now? I'm genuinely feeling that. Mm -hmm. Straight down. Sometimes it's the sort of thing that can spread. You're getting it in your gums or is it in the teeth itself? Yeah, it's also everywhere. Yeah. Down your jaw. Right down your jaw. Mm. And when it gets worse, and it gets worse. And suddenly it's gone. And gone. And you don't feel anything at all. It's like it's anaesthetized. You feel nothing. Nothing at all. Like in the back of your hand there. It's like a blueness. It's like a blueness in the hand. No, nothing. <laughs> Try pinching it. What's it like? Nothing clammy and it's not responsive at all. I imagine you can probably feel your wrist anyway, you can feel your arm. Yeah. You really not feel that? Seriously. Would you be happy to, you know, bash that or twist it really hard or stick something through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to stick a needle through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to do that now? If I gave you a needle? Yeah. Just to show us that really is dead. You'd be happy? Yeah. <laughs> These are sterilised hypodermic needles. You want to hold that in that hand. You really can't feel that, can you? Seriously. Absolutely dead. It's just like a piece of dead meat on the table. It's like sticking a needle through a piece of dead meat. Go and just push it through. You should right through and out the other side. Right through. Oh my. Uh, you can't feel a thing, can you? No. How does it make you feel? 
weird. That is... weird. Just a dead hand. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. And you're not bleeding? You're completely happy with that? Completely happy with that. You pull it back out? Gently? No blood. No bleeding. Now the feeling's going to come back in your hand now. There'll be no pain. You find you can start moving your fingers now and moving your hand. It's weird. I saw the needle there and then it just came back out the other side and thinking, now this really should be hurting, but just nothing at all. When you took the needle out, you just couldn't see anywhere that the needle had been. I was really surprised. I thought, you know, there'd be some blood at least. It was an amazing experience. Impressed. Very, very impressed. <laughs> Bob Matthews is a runner who has set 22 world records and was a pioneer of the Paralympics. Because he's blind, I know he'll unconsciously pay more attention to what he can hear, subtle shifts and inflections in my voice. I met him at Crystal Palace. Bob, very good to meet you. Thanks for taking the time out for this. Um, can I just ask you to verify from the start that we've set nothing up, that you've got really no idea what it is we're going to do? I can say quite honestly that I haven't got the full use. Perfect. I'm going to give you an envelope to hang on to. If I give you that uh, in your left hand there, that's right. perfect. You can just hang okay. on to that for me. Yeah, we'll sure. come back to that later. Right. Now, you've achieved some fantastic stuff, and you've got a passion that has taken you all over the world. What I'd like you to do for me is to think of one place that you've been, nowhere where you think I might just guess, but somewhere that you have positive memories attached to. Is there somewhere okay. you can think of? OK. You got somewhere? Yes. Great. Now, I'm going to ask you to create a scenario in your mind, and I'll ask you some questions, and just answer those questions in the way that feels most natural as we do it, all right? So imagine for me that you're going out for the evening in this location that you're thinking of, all right? We will make it a romantic date. So the first question is, is this with um, wife or girlfriend? Now, I'm going to write this down. OK, wife. Wife. Fantastic. And we'll just home in on sort of one aspect of the evening. So you're sat somewhere with your wife. Are you indoors or outdoors? Indoors. Indoors. Inside. So we'll say this is a restaurant. Okay. All right. Uh, are you drinking red wine or white wine? Red. Red. Now, as you're sat there, you're aware of a cat walking behind you. And as it walks behind you, it gives out a little purr. All right. Now tell me, what's the cuisine of the restaurant? What nationality? Thai food. Thai. Excellent. As you go in and sit down, uh, the waiter comes over and takes your order. Now, it's a waiter, not a waitress. And as he walks away, you're aware of a specific piece of music playing in the background. Tell me what the music is. Uh, jazz. Jazz. I'd also like you to be aware of an aroma in the restaurant. Now, this is something specific, and it could be coming from flowers or something from the kitchen. Tell me what it is that you can smell in this restaurant. For some reason, I've got sandalwood. Sandalwood? Yeah. Sandalwood it is. All right, do you walk home or get a taxi? We uh, get the taxi. Do you arrive home before midnight or after? Before. And finally, will you tell me where all this is happening? What's the location? It's in Hereford. Hereford? Yeah. Anywhere in the world you chose Hereford. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Good uh, memories for me. Uh, I'm sure. Well, it sounds absolutely charming. Were you, were you thinking a lot about the answers or what was going on? I in was trying to give you what, what came into my mind first. Okay. So what I want you to do for me is to open up the envelope that you've been holding on to you all this to time. Now? Yep. I would like to show the camera. This really is genuinely sealed, which yeah. if you feel I can well, verify that is sealed, yep. Genuinely sealed. If you undo that for me, this sign up here, yep. and take out what's in there for me. Got it? Blimey, it's Braille. Got it. Fantastic. Just read that out for us. It says, uh, Dear Bob, I'm writing this uh, about an, uh, an hour before I meet you. If we don't meet again, I'll always picture you and your wife. Blimey. Um, and your wife enjoying... <laughs> 
enjoying a, a glass of red wine with your tie. <laughs> um, while Jazz... <laughs> well, Jack, this is surreal. While Jazz uh, plays in the, in the background, there is the um, aroma of, of candles uh, in the air. As ever, you will take a taxi and be back at uh, 11.30 um, as, as those nights in Hereford are, are, not to be, are not to be missed. Bloody hell. <laughs> Only the candles wrong. That's incredible. Well, I, I knew what I was thinking of, but I was, yeah. you went very specific with the sound of wood, but it yeah. was uh, sort of yeah. scented candles I had in mind. How do you feel? I'm stunned. I mean, it's, it's as if I'm. It's. it's, it's, it's I don't know. It's, it's like an out-of-body experience. It's like I'm in. It, uh, I, I'm witnessing this from from somewhere else. You know. Yeah. It's incredible. And my wife says jokingly that I'm 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 like an open book, but I didn't think it was. I was that open. Let me show you something, which, simple as it seems, utilises every weird skill I've learned in the last 15 years, and it's this game. Which hand is the coin in? Worthing. Fish and chips, donkey rides, Ovaltine and bingo. What could be more British? Except perhaps small time gambling at the end of the pier. Excuse me, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, sure. Excuse me, can I try something with you for a minute? Are you all mates? Are you all together? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. No, look at me. It's going to be you. Can I do this with you? Do you want to play a game? Yeah, sure. It's a fantastic game. You'll love it. Have you got a coin? A pound coin, preferably? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, I don't want to touch it. Put the coin in one hand behind your back. All right? 50 quid says that I can get five times in a row the right. correct hand. All right? I'll put that up there. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Come out with your hands. All right. Try not to give it away. Try not to give it away. Look me in the eye. You'll do something that tells me which hand it's in. You'll do so that's it, that one there, yeah? <laughs> show me, show me, show me. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, behind your back, second time. When you're ready. What was your name? Russell. Russell, all right. Second one tells me whether you're a challenger or a responder. A challenger keeps it in the same hand to try and catch me out. A responder picks up on the 50-50 the thing and puts it in the other hand. That's what you are. I think you're smart enough to put it in that one. Am I right? Show me, show me, show me. Excellent, fantastic. All right, third time. <laughs> now, you see, maybe there's more of a tension in one hand than the other one or something that gives it away, but it's not that because your sleeves are down. I can't see anything like that. You're not holding one hand tighter than the other. Little thing there with the tongue. It's this one, isn't it? Am I right? Show me, show me, show me. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> Walthamstow Stadium, where hundreds of men who all look like my dad come to watch some thin dogs running around. I should point out that I don't do a lot of what you're about to see anymore. I used to, but it's not entirely fair. Number six has not won. No, it hasn't won. So you shouldn't get anything on this at all? No, it's worthless. This is worthless. Absolutely worthless. All right, give me one minute, I'll be straight back. Now, why are you looking at him? Where's he going? Surely he can't draw money. Don't believe it. I don't. How come? How? I don't believe it. Right. As much know, as that. Do you want to know how it's done? Yeah, tell me. That's just the start. That's only two quid. That's just the start. I'll show you how it works. Just follow me. Just follow me, okay. all right? Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your chest. Uh, put your hand on your wrist. 
Excellent. Now that's your elbow, not your wrist, all right? <laughs> but the point is, you follow what I say, you take my lead, all right? Okay. It's, a, it's just a control game, all okay. right? That's yeah. all I'm doing here, just at a much more advanced level, all right? Yeah. Now here's what I want you to do. We'll do a couple more races. Yeah. Each time, you bet on the dog you're sure is going to lose. Okay, no problem. Right? But as much as you like. Have you got a... Do you know which one's going to lose the next one? You got any ideas? Okay, yes. Yeah. All right. I'm looking at this. I haven't Track got two will lose. Clue. Track number two will lose. Yeah. How much are you going to put in it? Trust me on it, all right? Ten pounds. On. Ten quid? Yeah. Fantastic. Ten quid on number two. Right. To win, all right? To win. Right, let's go and collect our losings. You look her right in the eye, yes. you've just got to trust me and don't be nervous about it, this will work. It will work because you'll believe that it will work. Okay. You look her right in the eye, yeah. you hand her the ticket, mm -hmm. and you say, this is the winning ticket, and you just believe that from the bottom of your soul. This is the winning ticket. This one's not winner. Not winner? This is the dog you're looking for. Try again, you may have misread it. Oh yeah, sorry, you have one, sorry. Fantastic. Good grief. Yeah. Can you come? Can you come for the next sorry meeting? Yeah. 20, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 100, 90. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is it legal? <laughs> no, I have no idea. <laughs> Two more times. Two more times. But just wait, take your time before you come out. Yeah. It's a free choice. You've now been alternating backwards and forwards, so pattern-wise, I'd expect you to put it back here. Either way, put it in the hand that feels right and leave the hand that's left empty. That's my left, but don't let me influence you, right? Bring, bring your hands out. All right. Now, this is the fourth time. It's almost as if by the fourth time you start to feel guilty about which hand has the coin in. It's almost as if you start to kind of, like one hand starts to throb with embarrassment or feel heavier than the other one. This one here, yeah? You're going backwards and forwards, show me that one, fantastic. All right, last time, last time. Will he continue the pattern of alternating or will he try and catch me out by putting it in that one twice in a row? Bring your hands out. <laughs> right, just relax, relax, relax. Right. I will tell you in one move, which hand the coin is in, all right? I'll ask you to do one thing and that will tell me what it is. Cross your hands over, put one hand on top of the other. Cross. Just cross them over. Don't open it, all right? But I'm telling you, guilty one at the bottom is this one, isn't it, yeah? Don't open it though, am I right? Yeah, right, get rid of your other hand, turn your hand over. Now here's the really weird thing. You know, whether that coin is heads or tails up at the moment. You don't know how you know, but you know. And the reason why you know is that you've got a thousand nerve endings in your fingertips and in the palm of your hand yeah. telling you whether it's heads or tails. Don't try and feel for it, because you won't know. Yeah. I won't do you any good at all. Just look at me. Is it heads or is it tails? Go for what feels right. Just tell me, is it heads or is it tails? Heads. Pardon? Heads. Heads. That feels right, does it? Yeah. Have a look, you're right. Oh, oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Very good. A Very miracle, good. thank you so much. Hang on, that was my pen. <laughs> oh, would you? Hang sorry, on. sorry, sorry. Nick in my stuff as well. It was only my hands and a pound coin. So I couldn't. It was all me, and he was just saying stuff. I could have won £50 he put up there, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't. He's too good. He did it like five times in a row, man. No, you knew you weren't going to get 50 quid from the start, man. No, no one gave you 50 quid. But, <laughs> No, it's some good shit. Good shit. I can throw the card away now. You don't need it. Oh no, you got you gotta pick the loser. I'll go pick the loser. Busty boy. Busty but boy, you think we'll lose the next race? We'll lose, yeah. Alright. Okay, how much are you gonna put on this one? Well, should we put some more money on or should we keep to our same stake ten pound? We don't wanna be greedy because twenty? Twenty quid. Twenty pound. Trap one. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So it's twenty quid to win. Right, one, busty, busty boy. boy. All right. right.
Yeah. 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 Losing ticket. The losing ticket. This again. is a losing ticket. So this is a worthless ticket. All right, now let me show you something really interesting. Let's go to a different window this time. Go, go, go to one further up. Right. Hang on, hang on. Remember what I said. Look her right in the eye. Right in the eye. This is a winning ticket. Okay? This is the dog you're looking for. That's why we came to this window. Thank you. Fantastic. It's easy to misread them sometimes. Can I, can I just check something with you? It says there that uh, mistakes can't be rectified after we've left the window. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I just ask you, what, which dog won again on that one? What was the number, the correct number for the, the dog that won? Number four. Four, great. Right, so the ticket I just gave you was number... Number one. One, which you've just paid out on winning. What are you doing there? What's just happened? It just told me to pay out. <laughs> you told it to pay out? So the machine you... told you to pay out? No. One minute it won, next minute it didn't. It was horrible, actually. It was like, my God, what have I done? You know, I'm giving out money to everybody. Buy yourself a drink on us. Uh, OK. Thanks for that. Thanks very much. There you go, mate. Thank you. There we go. You've done very well. Thank you for your Thank time you and for much. your trust. Very profitable. Uh, excellent. And uh, will we see you It's again? a rush, isn't it? It's terrific. Yeah, yeah, great. Will we see you again the next meeting? Um, oh yeah, I'm back in next week. <laughs> we won tonight £160 on losing tickets. And all I can say is thank you to Darren and thank you Wolfenstein. Great track. Shopping malls. Modern cathedrals to spending money. They're designed to disorientate us and make us stay longer than we need to. Every brick is there to manipulate us to buy. It's the perfect place to find a large number of compliant people to affect. Welcome to the Wicked Centre Croydon. We hope your shopping experience has been uplifting enough. And I'd like to bring to your pay attention some very special offers today. What you hear in the background is a Tanoi announcement I pre-recorded and played through the shopping centre. So why not come right on up and see for yourself? After half an hour of absorbing it, they should be ready for a final message. Welcome to the Whitgift Centre, Croydon. We hope your shopping experience is an uplifting arm, and I'd like to bring to your pay attention some very special offers today. Details of our special offers can be found handily by the lifts, so why not come right arm up and see for yourself? These offers will only be available for a short period of time, so all customers wishing to reach up and grab this exciting opportunity should do it now. I was shopping around with my friends and all of a sudden my hand just went up and I don't know what happened. It was quite embarrassing, but I don't know, it just feels weird. We're just walking around and we heard him speaking and just everyone put their hand up at the same time. It made me feel better because everyone was doing it at the same time, but I just didn't know why I'd done it. We are being brainwashed. <laughs> One night I stayed up to almost midnight and went to Heaven Nightclub where carefree young people dance the night away. Can I try some stuff with you? Try some mind reading with you. I just need you to trust me and kind of go with me. I won't go anywhere too personal. Can you think for me of the name of the guy you first kissed? Is there one person you can think of? All right, look at me. It's going to be an easier name, isn't it? I'm not telling. 
Okay, say the name to yourself over and over again. All right, think of a letter sort of in the middle of the word somewhere. Have you got one? Can you think of a letter? That'll help me. Just look at me, think of that letter. That's a V, isn't it? You're thinking of a letter V. My goodness. <laughs> so it's a name with a V and look at me. Bit of a guess, Stephen? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that it? No, that's it. That's, that's it. it, that's it. Can you remember where you were? Look at me, can you remember where you were? This is someone else's house, oh not goodness. not his house. This is someone else's house, is that right? No, it wasn't a house. It wasn't a house. You're getting someone called Rich. Oh my look goodness! Look at me, look at me. No. What, 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 what were you going to say? What were you going to say? Riches. It's a nightclub. In Houston. In Houston. In Where Texas? Where we're from, yes. So when I say someone's house, it's not Rich's house, Rich is a nightclub. It's a nightclub. Oh my goodness. I started getting chills. He says somebody's house and I was like, he's wrong. You know, he doesn't. He has no clue at this point. And then he says, Rich, and I was like, Okay, somehow he still figured it out. Bill Hartston is a psychologist and a chess expert. I met him in the home of chess and one of my favourite places in London, the Grand Divan Dining Room of Simpsons in the Strand. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. You are an international master of chess and a former British champion. And you've also written the book on the psychology of chess. What, for you, does the psychology of chess boil down to? There's two halves of it, really. First of all, the personality that it takes to make a great chess player, yeah. which is obsessive, determined, fairly bright, but not too bright. You're describing me so far. Can you I was going to say yes. it's really the same as you, yeah. Um, the other thing is the psychology that goes on between the two players. You know the way sumo wrestlers at the start of a fight uh, glare at each other and throw salt. Effectively, chess players are doing that throughout the game. It's one player trying to get psychological ascendancy over the other. We both know that if you were to play chess with me now, you would thrash the pants off of me. I'm not going to ask you to do that. Instead, I would like to play you at this. Mastermind. It's a simple game. You make a hidden code of any four coloured pegs. And I have 12 attempts to crack your hidden code. All right? Now, before we start, grab a whole load of pegs, take them under the table if you like, and just take out one, any one from your handful, and uh, pop it under your hood, as it were. So I will look away while you do all of this. I am done. Are you done? All yeah. right. Now, what I'm hoping for here is that when I said before we start, that kind of catches you out and knocks you sideways a little bit, catches you off guard. You should have gone for the psychologically most appealing colour, which is yellow. That is the one I went for. Can I see? Can you just lift the hood for a second? Fantastic. Now, don't feel silly about that. 85% of people would have made the same silly choice. <laughs> Never mind. But now we'll play properly. It's a great game. Let me get rid of these. Any four colours, you will make your hidden code. I will look away while we do it. Let me know when you're done. This game is made for people with smaller fingers than I've got. <laughs> done? Yes. Okay, all right. I will now go for the most obvious combination that we used to play on the playground when I was six with each other. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Just say orange and green and green and yellow. Is that it? Be honest with me. Am I anywhere close to what you have? Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done. Fair enough. <laughs> The name of the person you first came out to. You can remember this obviously very clearly, all right? Yes. I guess this is quite a big moment. All right, look at me, go back there in your mind, be there, all right? Can I tilt your hat back just slightly so I can see your eyes a bit better? Sure. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, I don't think with you, I don't think this is going to be someone of your own age. I think this is going to be somebody older, isn't it? Is that right? I think you'd probably choose somebody older and you choose a woman. Yeah? Is this at home? Is this your home? No, but there is a link with the home, isn't it? Say the name to yourself over and over again. First name, very short. First name's one syllable. Second name is a bit longer. The second name, keep saying it, is a soft sound. Just lift your chin just slightly. Was she like a mother to you or something? Or is this, yeah. It's like, it's a, definitely like a mother figure going on here. All right, it's a soft name. Uh, 
the first one is begins with a, a, a but or a per sound, is that right? But, be, not bet, Pat, is it Pam? Pam, <laughs> look, look at me. <laughs> Look at me, look yeah. at me, say it yourself, don't lose it, keep saying the name. Okay. The second name, it's a soft sound at the beginning, uh, uh, there's an L in the middle, a L sound in the middle, yeah, and it softens out after that. Pam, begins with an H, Holly, something like that, am I close? What was her name? Oh yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> and she was good about it, wasn't she, because that was a good memory. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much, that was, that was really great. <laughs> I need a cigarette. He just guessed um, things that I don't know how anyone could have guessed. Things that happen on the other side of the planet, actually. Let me try with you the hardest thing that I used to do, all right? Which was to try and predict a color choice before it was made. And we'll do this with all four. So I will try and know the color that you're going to go for before you even know yourself. Right. Okay? I'm going to use another set. This is the new original Mastermind as opposed to the classic version which you're using there. So here's the thing, given the pattern that you've now established, the first one is easy peasy lemon squeezy. It absolutely has to be that one. Okay, now you put yours down. Looking away? Yep. Are you done? Yep. Okay. Now the second one, a little more difficult. Look at me, say blue. Blue. Yellow? Yellow. Torp. Torp. Okay, put your second one in. Okay. Okay. Third one now. I will say nothing to influence you. I won't say a word. Let me put my one in. Take your time to make your decision. I look away. Done it? Uh, last you won't one now. You not whistle anything to influence me either. Say a word. Last one now. What I want you to do is this. Have a peek in your hand and just look at any one of the colours there. Just do that for me. All right. Okay. Think of that colour. But now change your mind. Do it again. Just glimpse, glimpse another one. Yes. Got it? No, nope. sorry, do it again. Get another one. What are you doing? You got it? Look at me, and that's it. That's the one I want you to put in. Okay. Right. All right? Don't cheat me on that. I mean, wait, no. till I, wait till I've got mine in. Okay, I've put mine in now. That's my four done. I'm getting rid of these. Please put the fourth one in. I'm looking away. Are you done? I am done. Fantastic. So that is all for you. Yeah. Okay. Now, the chances of me getting this right is one in eight times eight times eight times eight which is 4,096. Yes. Let's see. How did I do? How did you do that? Ooh. Super. Thank you so much for being such a good <laughs> sport, Bill. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I don't know how he did what he did. It wasn't persuading me to do things, because sometimes I was picking the pegs at random, and even I didn't know which colour I was picking. Uh, He's pretty. The next piece is genuinely dangerous. Chris Ryan was in the SAS for 10 years and escaped from behind Iraqi lines during the Gulf War. He'll clearly be a tough person to read and manipulate. I took him to a bunker at Greenham Common. The purpose of me being here today was to see him fail. I was trying to push him the wrong way right through until the end when he actually fell from the podium. If he hurt himself, it's uh, part of the game. What you see here, Chris, is a network of planks. Planks of wood five feet above this solid concrete floor. You are going to booby trap these to form an assault course for me, leaving one safe path from the start, which is right over there, to the finish, which is here. Right, and let me show you what we've got here. There's broken glass, razor blades, careful, yeah. <laughs> razor wire and nails. All right, now bear in mind when we do this, I will be barefoot, so be as nasty as you like. Yeah, I okay? can do that. You can, fantastic. The end of the assault course is here, and there are three concrete podia for me to fall off, mm -hmm. and one crash mat 
for me to land on. You position that crash mat by one of the three podia. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, yeah. Good. Come with me down the end, let me show you the start. Just stand and face down it for a minute for me. Now, would you be happy walking down there? Absolutely not. You would? Yes. What about now? Absolutely not. Not at all? No, not a chance. Well, for me, I can assure you, this is a genuinely frightening prospect. Will you tie that for me, Chris? Nice and tight. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm going to leave you to make the course. Could you see through this blindfold? No. 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 Fantastic. Whilst I know the shape of the course, I have no idea which path Chris will leave safe for me. And to restrict my balance even more, I ask him to tie my hands behind my back. Chris, now I cannot see a thing, but just so that people at home trust that, I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing for me. As you leave, you'll see there's the box on the cables and plugs for the lights run into. On top of that is a key. When you turn that key, all the lights will go out. The room will be plunged into absolute darkness. Then you'll go out, you'll close the door, sealing me in alone, and you'll be taken through to the control room where you'll be given a headset we can carry on talking. Darren, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Chris. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay. Uh... Chris, you should have in front of you four monitors connected to night vision cameras. Correct. That's three cameras that are fixed along this course, and the fourth one is a remote camera which can be controlled by Aaron, who should be sat next to you in the control room. Can you see all of that? Does that make sense? Yes, I can see it, yes. Okay, fantastic. Now, Chris, listen very, very carefully. I am going to ask you for directions across this course. When you give me your answers, you can lie or you can tell the truth. It is up to you. My job is to correctly read your vocal signals and maneuver myself safely across the course. Does that make absolute sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Now, I may try to trick you into telling me the truth, but no matter how much I plead or beg or cry like a brownie, don't buckle. Your job is to mislead me. That makes sense? Yes. Then we shall start. First one, though, I would like you to be honest about, just so that I can hear what you're like when you're telling the truth. So just to start with, just for the first one, is it right, left, or forward? Then that's my right and my left. Right. I go right. I cannot believe you fell for that one, Chris. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, you've probably been in a position where you've had to tell whether or not somebody was lying. What things in their voice would you listen for? Maybe a bit of uh, nervousness. A bit of nervousness, hesitation? Yes. Is it forward, right, or left now? Right. You were so careful to hide any hesitation there, Chris. <laughs> I think it, well, it can't be left because I've just been there, so it must be forward. You are obviously fibbing. These are four paces long, given my stride. What size feet have you got, Chris? Nines. So at home, would you prefer a moccasin or a more conventional slipper? Never wear slippers. Is it right, left, or forward here? It is right. You said that with a strange, conspicuous roll of the eye. You're obviously a little self-conscious. Let me do this one again. Is it right, left, or forward? It is left. I'm going to go forward. Chris, tell me your full name. Chris Ryan. What's your mother's maiden name? Jackson. What's your father's maiden name? Is it right, left, or forward? It is left. Strange sort of hesitation there. Don't believe you, I'm going forward. I'm, I'm going to back up. I think I was a little too cocky there. Hang on. God. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me do this one again. Okay, Chris, sorry. Will you say right for me? Right. Say left. Left. Right. Left.
I'm sorry. Hang on. Fuck. Sorry, Chris, I've genuinely got myself in a muddle here. I need to genuinely hear whether it is right or left. Well, can I just ask you just this one time to tell me honestly, is it right or left? Trust me, take a left. Shit. Are you, are you being honest with me? Is it, really, is it really left or are you just saying that because you think I'm trying to catch you out? I'm not trying to catch you out. Is it left? Is it really left? Trust me, it's left. There's no way after I caught you out the first time that you'd do that again. And I don't trust you, trust me. I'm going down here. Ooh. Jesus Christ. If I remember the course correctly, I am now at the end of the course. Uh, I think I'm on the middle of the three podia at the end. Chris. I'm going to number these. Let me just work my way across here. This we will call podium number one. Podium number one, all right? Okay. Get back. This is number two. Hi. And the next one is number three. Now, Chris, you've placed the crash mat under just one of these three podia. I need to know which one of these is safe for me to jump off. So I'm going to ask you the same question three times. Chris, you give me the same answer three times. And the answer is always yes. Podium number one, is it safe? Yes. Podium number two, is it safe? Yes. Podium number... Usually you can tell by their eyes or possibly body movement, but obviously he didn't have any of them. It was absolutely amazing. I'd have liked to seen him fail. Uh, that was the, that was the whole idea, and uh, I'd have you know I'd have liked to seen it happen, but unfortunately it didn't.